everyone. I realize a lot of you are starting to get the product now and you probably have some questions. Uh, my name is Armin. I'm one of the founders of DraftHop. And, uh, you know, we try to design a tool that works on most cans. Well, there's so many different types of cans all over the world. So one tool that works on that, it has different experiences with different types of cans, um, of which we'll kind of go through here shortly. So I will try to keep this quick so that you're not forced to watch the whole video of me. Uh, in the event you kind of have an idea as to how it works, but you need a little bit more help. So obviously the packaging, we were told um, we could do a better job of uh, creating direction. So we're going to work on that. Um, for the most part, what I would say is when you do get the tool, I know some of you are concerned as to whether or not it was defective. As we did mention that in a update, there was a small batch that went out that way. If you were able to see a number anywhere on the bottom of the tool, that'll indicate that it was assembled wrong. But for the most part, as long as those, those splitters are in there and they rotate with your finger easily, then odds are you probably have a correctly assembled tool. There's a little bit of a learning curve to using this and um, that's hopefully what I'm gonna explain here in just a minute. Uh, first and foremost, when you do get the tool, rinse it. Um, best thing to do just to rinse it right after you get it. Warm water, you don't need to use soap. Uh, and then after each use or each session, so if you and your friends are drinking and you're going to be drinking for a couple hours and it's staying wet, then you're fine. At the end of that, you got to rinse it. If it's just you drinking and you're going to have one or two drinks and then leave, um, make sure you rinse it. Soda, beer, uh, other juices, they all have syrup in them, so when they dry up, they make things stick. It makes the tool a lot more difficult to use. For the most part, once you get the tool, this little part that sticks out up here, is how you open the tool. You'll push in, kind of put your hand on the opposite side. If you're a lefty, you're using the That wasn't supposed to happen. You're gonna use the other side. We're gonna keep that for the bloopers. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here on some of our cans just to give you an idea as to how it works and what it works with. So. As you can see, we have some empties here and we've got some full cans. There are two major styles of cans that are very different. Spindrift, non-alcoholic seltzer drink, has a very different interior rim than this seltzer brand. There are many uh, domestic beer brands, soda brands that are familiar with this rim. This is an easier product to open than this one is, but we've got a few tricks that'll help you. Um, so with that said, why don't I get into it? Another suggestion we had from a backer that I thought was actually a really good one was if you open the can first, it releases the pressure and therefore you don't get a full sense of where you can grab. You know, you grab a can like this, it's sealed, hard to squeeze. You get to a can like this that's open, it'll tell you right then and there where you can't squeeze because it just doesn't have any structure to it. So. All right, so in using it on this style can, one of the best ways to go about doing it, I tell people, don't have to squeeze hard. I'm gonna look at the camera and I said it. Don't have to squeeze hard. If you over squeeze, you're likely going to run into problems and or break the tool. We've had a few people send in pictures of broken tools uh, that we know are a result of over squeezing. So um, it's more of a feel than it is, uh, you know, pressure and brute force. Once you find the sweet spot of the tool, I, righty, it does work lefty. My wife is a lefty, so she's vouching for it. Our engineer who helped design this is also a lefty. Um, we, we will consider making left versions in the future, but for the time being, as long as any of these four points are not resting on the tab, you're gonna put it in, you're gonna press down, you're gonna squeeze gently, enough that you can hold the can, all right? now. Lately, I've liked to hold it at the bottom, but you can also hold it at the top. Holding it at the bottom, you're gonna just, got two fingers here. I'm probably putting about five to 10 pounds of pressure on these fingers. And you're simultaneously squeezing while rotating. So that was roughly a quarter turn. I know it was two twists, but it was probably about 90 degrees. Top comes out. We know other people have issues with the top coming out. We are working on solutions for that. Um, there are other ways to doing it than putting your finger in. That being, open the can first, keep the tab pointed up. This tool will push the tab down. Once you know it's on there, you kind of rock it a little bit. And then, there we go. Open again, and what you can do this time now is grab the tab, 
and push it up. Now, if you are left with a little bit of a, a metal piece sticking out, it's aluminum, it's super soft. Use the back of your fingernail and just push it flat. When you think about it, when you normally drink from the can, your mouth is, your lips not going into the inside rim of that can. So you really have to go out of your way to hurt yourself. Um, you know, another thing that people bring up is that they're kind of grossed out by the fact that the, the lid goes in or that you have, um, you know, you, they'll just the lids going into the can. But in reality, when you think about it, it's an open can. When you drink from a can, your mouth is all over it. So we try to get people to understand that if you're grossed out about this, you've got to either wash the can, wash the whole case of cans before you do it. Um, even when you open it the traditional way, that little piece of tab, it's kind of hard to see here in the light, is sticking into the liquid. If you're truly a germaphobe, don't drink from cans. At least that's what I've been told. So um, why don't I get into a couple more examples here. So the slightly more challenging can is this one. All right, a lot of craft beers come in this version, has this, has this lid. Um, one of our contributors here gave us a great uh, suggestion on how to get through these more easily, and it is quarter turn in one direction, quarter turn back in the same direction that you came from, at which point you'll probably hear it loosen up and sever. So this one will hold towards the top. Okay, I'm gonna go quarter turn this way, quarter turn back. You can hear it just cut. Go a little bit further, and then that's it. At which point. Now, you might be listening for the noise when the can opens. Uh, it doesn't always have to fully cut. If you're okay with the lid going in, which I think after a while you'll become when you realize how much your mouth is actually on the initial one, then the idea is not to cut the entire top. The idea is simply just to uh, open the top, and uh, push it in. This way it gets recycled with the can. This truly can took two in the same direction. Peels in. And I'll go to one of these seltzers, a full seltzer here. Again, top or the bottom doesn't make a difference. That's where the structure is, but quarter turn, quarter turn back. Maybe go a little bit further. Some of these are better to put down Find that weak spot and slowly push it in. Prevents splashing, keeps it cleaner. So hopefully these uh, tips or tricks have helped. Um, I'm absolutely comfortable creating more of these. If you guys have questions, please reach out, direct message us on social media, whatever it takes, and uh, we'll do our best to help you with it. Just keep in mind that like the first version of any product, uh, you know, we're collecting this feedback. We're working our way through these problems to hopefully create a better product in the future. And uh, we're constantly at trying to make it a better product. So uh, cheers and drink topless.